Today I'm going to be talking about the different tools that I used to build the frame of my boat and the hull. What I have here is a 22 foot design that I got from Spirit International. Originally it's listed as what they call the Quintana Panga and you can find it on spiritinternational.com. And basically the boat started off as a 19.3. I extended it to 22 feet and the beam on it originally was 7.8 I believe. And I extended that out to about 8 foot 9. So as you can see I'm doing plywood over frame construction. So it has a really nice curve in it. You can see where I'm starting to seal up all the screw holes. And pretty much what I have left to do today is finish up the front panel on the starboard side. And I already have that one rough cut. Mount that with my deck screws. And then I'll get my planer and start planing out all these edges and use my belt sander to finish it off. And then I'll start working on the curved pieces for the bow. But today I'm going to be talking about tools that I'm using for this project. So this is my second boat that I've built. The first one was a 12-footer. And I'm using the exact same tools for the 12-footer that I am for the 22-footer. First off, I think I'll start by importance of the tools. First thing you need is a really good cordless drill. This is really the only tool that I spent a decent amount of money on. It's a Milwaukee impact driver. I keep a spare battery because by the time I'm done going through one battery, I have the other one charging up. And it's a lifesaver. You can just go continuously and you'll do a lot of screws on your boat. Then from there, I have my belt sander, which is a Black & Decker. I tried to go with relatively inexpensive tools on this project. They all survived the first boat without any issue, and they're doing a great job on the second boat. I use the belt sander for any area that I have had to um, plane down, and then I want to finish grind using 40 grit to get the wood even. I'll show you an example real quick. So for instance, this is a rough edge right here, and what I do is I mark the wood with a black marker when I have it screwed on to the frame and then I cut it with my skill saw and then I go in after with my Ryobi planer which I'll show you in a minute and plane it down to within about a sixteenth or an eighth of the rest of the plywood and then I use my belt sander to finish off the edge so you get a super clean edge I'll most likely be rounding all these edges too because six ounce cloth likes rounded edges better. But um, that's for another day. So going back, I mentioned my planer. I actually have a very inexpensive Ryobi planer that works fantastically. It has a little dust collection bag. Yeah, one of the things I tried to do when I was building a 12-foot boat was to try to be as inexpensive as possible. I didn't go the Harbor Freight route, even though that's very doable, but I ended up getting Ryobi for a bunch of my uh, tools, and I'm extremely happy with this planer. The only downside, I guess, to this planer is that you need to clean the bag out about every five minutes, but that's no big deal because it lets the, cool, the tool cool down and gives you a minute to think every time that uh, you're planing a surface, which is always a good idea. A cord or a cordless drill, as I mentioned before, is a must. 
as well as either a second cordless drill or a power drill. I recommend a power drill. This is a great DeWalt unit I've had for years. Never failed me. And there are a lot of times where you need to drill holes, pre-drill holes with the electric drill and then <clears throat> put in your screw you know, after the fact using the cordless. And it's so much easier to have two drills for this purpose. I also have a Ryobi jigsaw and this works great for me. Now and then I'll get into an area where I just need to do a down and dirty cut. It's in an area I can't quite fit my skill saw and the uh, jigsaw is great for that. Of course protection is a must. Even when cutting wood it's really a good idea to use a respirator. I use a 3M respirator for everything whether I'm painting, fiberglassing, filling in gaps with fairing compound. The 3M is great. The filters lasted me for my entire first boat and I started to smell some fiberglass fumes when I was working on the second boat so I just went and replaced the filter units. Hearing protection. I do a lot of shooting so I have about three pairs of hearing protection. I go back and forth though. I also have just simple ear inserts that I use but it's most convenient to have the uh, pop on top guy. Got a couple pair here. Now what's really important is the screws that you use. The boats I've built so far won't be sitting in the water but regardless I've been using screws, uh, a combination of stainless and deck screws. I've really fallen in love with the deck screws. Um, typically by the one and five eighths and the two and a half inch. My only negative about deck screws is I can't find them in one inch. So I'm probably gonna pick up a bunch of one inch stainless. The issue with this is that when you're mating the plywood to the shear clamp on the chine log, you end up just getting the tip of the screws sticking out the other side. And of course, you wanna be clean and not have screw tips sticking out that can scratch you when you're working on the boat. So my goal is to pull them all out and then replace them with the uh, one inch stainless. The best brand by far to get is Deck Plus. These are extremely great deck screws. They're made for exterior use. They have amazing corrosion resistance properties. Highly, highly recommend these. They have the star head on them. Comes with a bit in the box and it's super easy to put in and out of the wood. The brand I do not recommend, actually, let me go back one step. Deck Plus is the one that I do not recommend. They work, but there's a high rate of bad